and evolve. the co-founders of the Awaken Life Project. So we came here eight years ago. With a wild and crazy vision. And we had a vision to, uh, to find a beautiful place where we could create heaven on earth. We're in uh, central Portugal. Um, mountain range called the Serra do Sor, which means the mountains of the hawk. Uh, very close to the Serra do Estrela, which is the mountains of the stars, which is the biggest mountain range in Portugal. The Awaken Life Project is dedicated to creating a new human culture beyond separation and limitation that is based upon the truth of unity. The project is a growing network of people committed to creating this new culture in all aspects of society be it at work, in the schools, within the family, or between friends, in the countryside or in the city. At the heart of this project is a strong practice of meditation and awakened inquiry. Quinta de Miserella, a small resident community, retreat center, and permaculture farm, is the spiritual heart of the Awakened Life Project. Awaken Life Project, there's a hub which is what's happening here. Here is a farm called Quinta, which means farm in Portuguese, Quinta de Miserella. And we live together here. At the moment we're like eight permanent residents, the number fluctuates a bit, and we have lots of volunteers, we run courses, we run retreats. What the vision is here is to put, to put a human life into a, into a spiritual context, but also into an evolutionary context creating a new culture right here, right now. Mm -hmm. A culture with eyes open and with all of us open, not just, um, not just the eyes, the heart, the soul, the spirit, everything is open to life itself. I think most of what it means, you know, awakened life means being alive, fully alive, not just being here, you mm -hmm. know, in, in this body and having a heart that's beating. I'm talking about being animated, being inspired. Um, and being in touch with something that's uh, um, that's me, and at the same time, you know, much much greater than this body that's sitting here. The Awaken Life Project is dedicated to the liberation of the human spirit, the individual discovering their true nature, an evolutionary culture, which really points to human beings coming together. So that's also a big part of our vision: is to facilitate and uh, and, and catalyze a collective uh, awakening. And then the other dimension is in harmony with the ecological web of life. So we've obviously chosen to be in a rural context here to demonstrate a possibility to live more sustainably um, on, this, on the earth and also to live in harmony with the earth, in other words, to be in communion with nature. It's not about um, us being hiding away here in the mountains, making a very beautiful life for ourselves, but it's about um, creating a, well not even creating, a, the movement is creating itself. It's about, um, you know, involving anyone else who, who also has a vision, has a deepest vision and longing for a, a better human culture and a, and a better planet, really. Welcome to Quinta de Miserella. So Quinta de Miserella is actually the, the name of the actual uh, Quinta where the Awaken Life Project is. So it's the physical place. So I'm going to give you a little tour, okay? So we have some kind of funny names of places and it's all part of the history. So this room was actually going to be built for accommodations, but it's now a storage room and it's called the Aquarium. And the reason it's called the Aquarium is because we made a mistake, one of our many mistakes, and we ended up digging the slope coming into this building in the wrong direction and it filled up with water. 
and um, also it became very, very clear that it's too damp in here to be uh, an accommodation. So it's called the aquarium, and when we say, hey, go put it in the aquarium, that means put it in the storage room. So this is actually the meditation room now, but originally uh, this room was called the happy house. And the reason it was called the happy house because it was the ruin that was the most completely collapsed. And for some reason, the energy in this room was fantastic and very happy, even though it was pretty much in the worst shape of all the buildings. So there's only the old timers call it, call it the happy house every once in a while, because everybody else knows it by the meditation room. foundation of, of um, the Awakened Life Project and, and any true authentic spiritual teaching or realization is the recognition of fundamental unity. The, the, the absolute truth is that in the deepest place that there's only one, there's only one life, one consciousness, uh, one God, whatever we want to we call it. Um, so in my experience meditation is the most direct um, doorway to that discovery but that's not to say that it can't be discovered in, in all other ways um, but the reason we uh, we teach meditation and why meditation is is a is a practice here uh, amongst all of those involved with the Awaken Life project is because it, it's it, it, it's a way to ground ourselves in that in that place of prior unity of no problem of fundamental uh, trust Sitting still, relaxing deeply, alert and awake, I let everything be exactly as it is, with no problem, no expectation and no struggle. I meditate with infinite patience, with nothing to do, nothing to change, nothing to achieve free from identification with the arising of thought, I simply rest as consciousness itself. I think what touched me the most is the simplicity of everything. How they teach meditation, for example, is let everything be as it is. It's extremely simple. But it's so simple that it's also extremely difficult because it's so simple <laughs> and we're not used to it at, at all to let everything be as it is. So one of the questions that people ask is why is meditation important in my everyday life? So it's fantastic to have great meditation experiences on the cushion but when you get off the cushion how do you act? And what meditation can give you, it can give you more space between your thoughts, between your feelings. It can give you the opportunity to make other choices. And if you make other choices in your life that's based on something deeper, your, all your relationships can change and your relationship to your whole life can change. I came here without any meditation experience, any at all, whatsoever. So yeah, many people say this is like a new technique, like meditation with no object. I think this is just a very direct path to, to the space, to the, to the nothingness that's everything somehow. I think it started changing my life because, because I think I med meditation is the source somehow. It's the source to, to really start like when, like in the moment when I understood that I wasn't my mind, like really saw that I wasn't my mind, that I wasn't my body, that I wasn't how I feel. It something shifted very deep, and with meditation you start creating, yeah, space between. Because of course you are all of this. You're your mind, your emotions, your body, but that's not only who you are. Like you are this vast process that's happening, and somehow, very fortunately, we're contained right now in this human experience, in, the, in this body, which is fantastic because uh, we can have this conversation right now, and it's amazing. But we're so much bigger than this. The meditation I've done previously has very much been about having an object of meditation. So either using the breath or trying to develop a state of mind, such as a virtuous state of mind, you know, love, compassion. 
Um, whereas here it's very much more about letting go of everything or just letting everything be, accepting whatever your experience is in the moment. So initially I found that incredibly challenging because I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. Despite the instructions being incredibly clear in their chant um, and just letting everything be exactly as it is and just surrendering to the moment and nothing is a problem and there's nothing to do and there's nothing to change. It's actually, well, I found it quite difficult to do and it took me certainly three days on that retreat of really struggling to, yeah, for the instructions to click into place and for it to make sense. But it did and it felt really, really nice. <laughs> Before, it's like I knew that my mind was never going to go quiet. I was never going to stop thinking. You know, the mind just keeps thinking. It's like the heart keeps beating. And I never sat down to meditation wanting my heart to stop. So why should I want my mind to stop? And I guess it's just identification with it and wrong ideas about what meditation is. So this meditation is really all about discovering and I love that word discovering because usually when we think of discover we, the idea is I'm going to go from A to B you know I'm going to discover something new out there but the true meaning of the word is to discover to uncover like uh, peeling um, like the layers of an onion you know to actually uncover what's already here which what's already here and what is it that's already here it's pure consciousness pure awareness this is the workshop but now it's called the rock shop because the W fell off and we can't find it. So somebody made a C. So now it's the rock shop. And this also was gonna be accommodation at one point because it's really, it's got an amazing view from this room. Okay, so this is coming into the big house. Um, but first this is the P&P, &P, which is basically where all the dry storage is. But P&P &P stands for pumpkins and power because it was supposed to be at the beginning was going to be where all the power systems were and where we were going to keep pumpkins. But now we don't keep any pumpkins and there's no power, but we still call it the PMP. This is coming into the big house, so this is the mudroom. And it's called the mudroom because all the mud hopefully lands here before it goes into the house. And you can see where we keep the food, food storage in here. It's also quite cool in here because we have only a little tiny refrigerator. And this is where we keep the shoes. Okay, so this is called the big house because it's big. No other reason. <laughs> so this is the communal kitchen. Um, we had a party last night for Mim, one of our um, long-term residents that's actually going to live in London now. And this is David cooking food. has to do with the collective intelligence, you know, the collective awakened consciousness. When you have a group of individuals who are autonomously taking responsibility for, for, for their own evolution, coming together with this sense of a higher purpose, there's magical and extraordinary things uh, that can begin to happen uh, in a collective. An aspect of the Awakened Life Project that's really important and is one of the things I love is that we put everything into an evolutionary context. And what that basically means is that we're part of a, of a process, a, a process that wants to evolve, that wants to create, that wants to, to innovate, that wants a higher level of integration and, and a higher level of uh, inclusion. And um, when a group of people come together with that as a context, um, it's very exciting because we're always reaching for that which is new, that which hasn't happened before individually but also together as a whole i'm not i'm not separate from from nature from from you from from anything but what does the, what does this mean in in daily life what does this 
experience and this this knowledge I gained from meditation, what does this mean to practice and to to really live? And that's what and that's what um, we do here to live beyond the ego. That means from uh, from the place of of oneness, but that doesn't mean that 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 it's perfect. Like it's part of it's part of this project that we we face we face our ego. But the question is always where where do you stand when you face it? And I had no sense of myself as a spiritual seeker. You know, it just wasn't part of my identity. I was on a very pragmatic down to our search for answers about how people can live together. Most attempts at living community fail. So what's the reason for the failure? And as well, we were looking for what works, what helps cement a community together. Um, and so there it was very, very simply, it's, it's the human ego that gets in the way. Egos just don't want to live together. They can't live together easily. They'll, they'll fight, they're all fighting for their own territory. And unless we're really aware of that and take steps to, to overcome that, we're doomed if we're trying to live together. There will always be conflict. We're trying to create a culture that's beyond limitation and beyond separation. And that's our definition, really, of ego. About me evolving on my spiritual path, although that's included, but it's about, it's really now about all of us mm, evolving true. and being on the path and doing it as a as a as a collective. Mm. But to actually be able to be a part of that happening is. Um, for me, it's like, wow, what else would I rather be, what else could I be doing? What else would mm -hmm. I rather be putting my, uh, my life into uh, than that? For me, that's what I feel like the world r needs right now is, is an example of another way that we can live together. When I really look deeply, my role here, and this applies to any of us, is just to be myself. Mm. You know, to always be, be digging deeper to find, and to find out what that is, you know, moment to moment, day by day. Okay, these, these top beds up here are called the Viking beds. And the reason why they're called the Viking beds is because um, it was when we built them, people had to carry these big logs down in order to build the beds. And they were like big time Vikings. So um, we just named them the Viking beds because it took a lot of work to actually make them. And then these bottom ones are called the bank beds. And the reason why they're called the bank beds is because they're very close to what's known as the bank which is our compost toilet. And it's called the Bank of Miserella, and it says your deposit is safe with us. There's no withdrawals from this bank, though. There's only deposits, so it's actually a very cool compost toilet with a beautiful view. Uh, this is uh, one of three compost toilets. This is called the Temple of Poo, and has a nice door. Um, and one of the reasons it's called the temple is because, see it has little arrows telling you what to do, but then also you just pull this up and see it looks kind of temple-like. But don't look in the hole because it's a little full right now. So this is one of uh, three showers that we have, and this one is very cool. It doesn't have an interesting name, but it's an interesting shower. So it, basically this is the back, this is just basically a terrace wall, and it's got a wood-burning hot water heater. So sometimes we, we actually do have to come in here and weed the shower because it will grow lots of plants in here because it's so moist and, and nice. But it's a beautiful place to take a shower because you feel like you're outside, but you have some privacy. Okay, the third compost toilet called the throne comes with a crown on the door. And if you come in here, you can see it actually does have a throne. And if you feel very inspired, you can wear your crown. So there's the queen side and the king side. I'm not sure how many people actually wear this. They don't really talk about it.
practice and, and what that, the, the culture that we're creating is based on. It's inquiry. And so the trust, the trust in this, fu this fundamentally already free part of ourselves um, provides a space where we can come together, you know, uh, in, in a context of no problem, of no division and, and profound unity. And then from there, look at and explore uh, all the ways in which we're conditioned, you know, uh, both psychologically and also culturally. So um, a lot of the work we do together in, in the project is, is in groups and um, the, the men, or we have uh, men's groups and women's groups, we also meet together in mixed groups and uh, these, in these forums uh, one of the things we're doing a lot is exploring uh, and inquiring into our own experience. Why are we the way we are? Why do we make the choices we make? And it really shows us that it's not personal. A lot of what we experience, mm. a lot of our internal dialogue and um, resistances and limitations, uh, they're not personal to us. They're, 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 um, they really are, are born from a... a you know, culture and history and, and they've been passed down through generations. So really what we want to find out, you know, the women come together and the men come together so we can really look at and we can see the conditioning that drives our actions because what we really want to find out is what does, um, what does a liberated woman look like? What does a liberated man look like? And to find out what a liberated man or woman would look like and then to be able to transcend any labels of gender and really come together, what is a, what is a human being actually look like? What's a liberated human being look like, whether it be in a feminine body or a masculine body? It doesn't matter because that expression is going to be unique in itself. Taking ourselves seriously, um, ourselves before <coughs> our identity as mothers, before our achieving stuff before our, you know, any of the things that we think we need to do to be ourselves, but taking ourselves seriously as um, people who wanted to, who want to evolve, you know, who wanted something higher. In a context where we just are interested in knowing why is it that we are the way we are, why do we respond to life the way we do, and finding out like our conditionings from history, from family, from just our educational context, from our families, whatever, it's, it's like, it's the most liberating thing that can happen. And when people are out in their everyday lives, they actually feel like everybody's with them. Yeah. Mm. Not to just prop them up, but also an obligation yeah. to hold something. Yeah, for sure. Nice. The support. Mm. I mean, the support in the group, within the group, and also the level of responsibility, I think. It actually is for guys to come together and just talk what's going on in their lives. Mm in a very real way mm. and how that's, you know, in a, sim sim in a sim simply put that's what we're doing or that's a lot of what we're doing in this group. Development or awakening, but we're interested in some kind of cultural shift. It's essential for men to, to be able to come together and, and uh, open up. We have names for all the beds and so we have uh, names like humility because gardening can be quite humbling. Uh, we have clarity, we have uh, apple beds, the ones that are under the apple tree. Okay, so basically this is called the shower for giants. That's the official name, but people call it now the giant shower. And um, it's called that because look how big the door is. It's huge. So it was going to be a shower at one point, and then it turned, that's why it was called the shower for giants, but then it turned into a storage room. And I think it eventually is going to turn into an accommodation that's going to connect to another accommodation. But we can also house people who are very tall can come here. It wants to inspire people to find their own to find their own way to to live to live their truth and to live their strength and to give to give themselves to the world in, in this way, in a way, yeah. Different people have different passions. So this place really, everyone that lives here, their passion is in order to create the place for other people to come. And out of that, different people have different passions. So we have uh, Laura and Marco, for example, who have been here for four and five years. 
their passion is the forest and bees. So they're already, we have beekeeping here, but they're creating a separate project called the Awakened Forest Project, and it's, it's connected to the land here, but it will be a, a project that they're taking on on their own. So the project is called the Awakened Forest Project. The forest and the land around here um, needs a lot of attention. A lot of it's abandoned monoculture that is very um, poor, ecologically speaking. Um, and it used to be um, broadleaf um, with chestnut, oak and cherry, that kind um, of thing. Both of us, when we arrived here at different times, um, felt very drawn to, to helping restore the native um, broadleaf in, in whatever way we could. It's, it's, it is a reforestation project, but also um, allowing people to, to come and um, have their hearts opened uh, mm. by nature and you know, let that facilitate some deeper exploration. Well, it's part of, it's part of, it is the Awakened Life project as well because, um, because of uh, our values and, and fundamentally our, our, our vision because it's all, uh, it's all about um, y unity you know, un unity, unity, consciousness, and and living that. Pete and Cynthia and others um, are are encouraging this autonomy, this um, flowering of the individual expression. Um, so it's not, you know, the Awaken Life Project isn't just about coming in and creating a community that's, you know, doing all the things it's doing. It's about coming and responding um, and finding out what your deepest calling is because your deepest calling is an expression of consciousness. We have another project um, that Andrea is taking to Colombia and it's called Schools for Life. And this project's a little bit different because Andrea is basically working with the Colombian culture um, and she's bringing a lot of people together doing different things. I think out of my, my passion and inspiration for what I've lived through when um, as being a resident in the Awaken Life project just led me to to share this context with people in Colombia um, and just trying to bring this perspective and context from my own experience and the values that I've learned here and share them with people that um, yeah just with 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 work and with um, communion and living together we understood that we really wanted to, to share this vision together and that something is arising there. The project in Colombia is called Schools of Life and it's kind of um, a lot of people coming together towards one same purpose, which is basically the foundation also of what I found in the Awaken Life project. Um, so it's founded with meditation, bringing this um, evolutionary context into place with people that are either uh, working in alternative education or permaculture or urban, urban gar gardening. We have another project called Avidanja that's um, about an hour and a half from here. And they were a project um, before and they became uh, an Awaken Life project. And their, their emphasis is on health. They do detoxes. Um, you know, it's, it's broader than health, but that's kind of their fundamental thing. I'm Yuta, I'm the founder of the project Avidanja. Hi, I'm Sandra and I'm the co-founder of the project Avidanja. Avidanja is a community with seven members and our focus is on conscious health. Conscious health means that when we reconnect to who we really are, then uh, our body, mind and spirit can heal. So we do that through retreats and uh, in that retreats, uh, we, uh, these retreats are about meditation yoga, dance, um, physical detox and conscious con conversations. And beside of that we do also permaculture and we, uh, on the long term we want to be sustainable and include uh, young people of the surrounding, surrounding villages uh, to teach them how they can uh, bring value in their lives. And Avidanja basically means um, dance of life for a new culture. And then we have something called the Awakened Family Project, which is part of a project called uh, Vida in Transensa, which means life in transition. And um, they are people that were very connected to us, and then their passion was education and children. So they created the Awakened Family Project. We moved two and a half years ago, and we started a familiar project that involves rebuilding, reconstruction, reconstructing a house. Um, learning how to work the land to to make uh, to give us some some food 
but that that's only a small part of it. The most important thing is, I think, is the growth um, individually, as a couple, as parents, as friends, um, as a part of of a larger community. Well, the idea is that we can hear loads of children running and laughing, laughing. Uh, in the valley, and um, <coughs> we can continue doing what we're doing as a family, but as a bigger family, with more families. Yeah, and next, how can a culture evolve and a culture that supports um, deeper and uh, real values, uh, so that, that, that in a way that allows us all to grow, in a way that allows us all to, to live with joy, with um, curiosity, with, with transparency, with love, just to spread it, to make it, to make it real uh, in more places. It's, it's already happening in the cities, here, at the Quinta, all over yeah. the world. So, and it, it's not just a project, it's a movement of consciousness that's, it's an awakening that it's, it's spreading, it's, it's happening virus. everywhere. It's a virus. Yeah, it's viral. Wake up. And evolve. Love. Let it be. True self. Humility. Rediscovering happiness. Empowerment. Revealing. New experience. Transformation. Care. Life force. New culture. Transparency. Happiness. Freedom. Pure passion. 